Hey friends, stay tuned for my friend Ethan's awesome story about how God gave him value and gave him something here special at Karis Bible College. Stay tuned for this episode of Karis Talks. Hey friends, thank you so much for tuning in to today's Karis Talks. I've got my bro, Ethan. What's up, man? I'm so glad you're here. You're on the show today. Happy to be here. Wow. Yeah. So tell me, where are you from, Ethan? So I was born and raised in Rutherford, North Carolina. So uh, what year are you? Second year right now, and I'm graduating. Graduating in yeah. a couple... Soon. So excited. <laughs> it's like a bitter, it's always that bittersweet, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, you're happy to be done, to see it completed, but then also you're like, oh man, so much good time has happened here, maybe the best time of my life, and and now it's it's back there, but you know, you can always look at it. Uh, how did you hear about Karis Bible College? Gosh, um, so when I was graduating high school, my mom was like, have you, Ethan, have you ever heard of Karis Bible College? And I was like, uh, yeah, mom, yeah, uh, I'm never gonna go to college because I hated high school, so I was like, ah, oh, no, no thanks. No college, I was like, unless I'm gonna be a doctor or something, I was like, I'll go to school for that. Um, but then I went went to go work in Florida for a while, and then God just changed my heart so much. Just one, I would go to church, and it had nothing to do with Andrew Walmack uh, or the college, and uh, I would just, every time I would felt like I was supposed to, like, I don't know how I got that out of every sermon. I was like, oh, I'm supposed to go to Karis, but I don't want to, God. <laughs> yeah. So through my mom, really, that I heard about the college. So what were you doing? You, 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 you have a family, pretty sizable family. Everybody's yeah, in yeah. school this year. So there's seven kids total, and, and six of us are in school this year, which six. is so wild. Yeah. Last year was just three, and now it's six of us. And I was like, God, you're, you're trying me here. <laughs> But it honestly is super good because we're we're so close, and it's awesome to see everybody's like, oh, you're in first year, I'm in first, I'm in second year. Like, they get to talk about their first year classes. I'm like, oh, the good old days. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was a good one. Tell me what you think uh, your biggest revelation has been since you've been at Karis. If you could narrow it down to just one, you can really trust his word. That it's really mm -hmm. always true, and it's always true for you. And everything that you read in the word is for you and you can stake your life on it. That if he said he was gonna protect you, he's gonna protect you. If he said he was gonna save you, he's gonna save you. If he said he was gonna heal you, he's gonna heal you. Like, there's no, you can't, you can't question it. It's almost like you take it for 100% that it's right 100% of the time. It's never wrong, mm. yeah. Any scripture that speaks to you like that? There's so many scriptures that kinda like built me through first and second year that I would just like, I would write them down because I have like a little notebook and it's like scriptures that have made me. And there was a one in I Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 1, 9 maybe, that talks about his word being a hammer that breaks the rocks and fire. And every time I would face a situation, I would imagine that situation having a name and it would be, just be a rock and his word was the hammer. I would just like swing it, it would break that rock out of my way and just like walk right through it. But so I went to Sri Lanka, uh, and it really changed my outlook on, on life and on not only like other people outside of, of the Christian faith, but inside. And it kind of all happened when we were in like a, a Buddhist village and we were just sharing the gospel and we just set up speakers and we were right below a temple and it was amazing. Uh, and all these kids, I think it was about 30 kids came up to me and they were like, oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna receive Jesus. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, but this is just so weird. This is too easy. I was like, <laughs> God, I was like, I think I'm missing something. I was like, show me what I'm missing right now. And so I was like, okay, are you, do you wanna receive Jesus as the one and only God? And they're like, oh no, we just wanna receive him as another one. And I didn't realize that they had millions of gods mm -hmm. and they just wanted to receive him as another God. And, and I kind of realized through that, that so many times we have our own kind of gods where it's like, they wanted to make Jesus, you know, even if they want to make Jesus 99% of, of their spiritual walk, they still want to have that 1% somewhere else, you know, that 1% of trust somewhere else. And, and I feel like we do that sometimes with jobs where we say, okay, God, you can provide for 50% or even 99% of my finances, but 
I'm gonna keep that 1% for me because I'm not, I don't fully trust you, you know what I mean? Or even with like doctors, we were like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna trust God with this much of my healing, but I wanna trust a little bit because I don't fully trust God. And it just kind of pushed me that God was like, you have to fully trust me. So, but honestly, after I explained that to them, 27 of the 30 kids got saved. And I was like, praise God. I was like, awesome. how amazing, yeah. So you went on your mission trip to Sri Lanka. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty tragic what's happened and, yeah. you know, in the past, in the news recently, uh, over Easter Easter Sunday, they had bombings at a lot of the you know, Christian uh, churches there. How do you feel about that? You know, being there and seeing... It was almost like unreal, like I saw it, and I was like, I was just there a month and a half ago, and that, that stuff had happened, because that wasn't really, it was very calm when we were there, but also, I mean, anytime you really have people that are seeking after the Lord, they're gonna, you're gonna run up against the devil. You know, he's always there to kill, steal, and destroy, right? You know, John 10, 10, he's always there. Like, without doubt, he's there to come against you, but you can have faith in God that he's giving you life and more abundantly, and even talking to the people uh, who I knew there through Facebook and whatnot, they're really seeing a God they're, I guess they're just more aware of God moving now. It's not that God wasn't there, wasn't really shaping people's lives, but it's just people are more dependent because they're like, oh, this is a time of crisis. I need something that's not, that I don't have right now. And so it's just, it's cool to see people built up by that, but it's also intensely sad that, that of course it happened at all, but I'm excited to see how people realize God building his kingdom there. And I think it's gonna be amazing. Tell me, uh, so you have a good Christian home that you you grew up yeah. in. Yeah. Has there been, ever been a time in your life where you're wavering with the Lord and uh, maybe took a different path or yeah. how God re reconciled you to that? Yeah, uh, so you're so right. I grew up in a Christian home, uh, awesome, awesome family, uh, very, very tight knit, uh, like wild, um, but on my 18th birthday, I was, I don't know why, it was just like happened all then. I was like, oh, I've done, I've done nothing with my life. I've, I've, all I've done is high school and I hated school so much. It was just like unbelievable hatred was flowing through my body for, for school. Um, but I was like, ah, I just hate that so much. And I was like, I've done nothing with my life. I don't have a skill. I was just kind of afraid of the future. And I was like, not suicidal, but I just felt no worth to life. I was like, I don't really have a worth. I'm not. I don't really know what I'm here for. I could, I was like, maybe I'll join the military because like, I don't know, like I didn't really feel like I was worth anything. And I just kind of ran about that. I, I got a job being a professional entertainer for the Walt Disney World Company. Uh, and that didn't really, I saw how everyone else was like kind of blurring out that worthlessness, that feel of worthlessness inside. Um, uh, through whatever drugs and whatever they could grab, whatever it was. It could even be like, they would just like, some people would just like watch movies and listen to music 24 seven. And that's how they would just, so they never had a quiet moment to where it was just them and God, you know? Cause he's always there, you know? Like, especially like, if you're saved, no matter what, he's always there with you, even in your darkest time, even when you're doing that, that bad thing, he's there with you. And so, yeah, during that time I just felt a worthlessness and I was just kind of like trying to drown it out and I was learning the ways of the world of how to how to do that. I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, I know how to how to not look at myself and feel that that worthlessness. But at the same time, I, I knew God. I never was like, oh God, you're not real. I don't need you. It was just kind of like, you aren't, uh, what your word is isn't what you've said here. I don't believe it. It was just kind of like, I don't really believe that you are who you said you are, God. And I was just kind of like, you aren't really protecting me. You aren't really there to love me. Like, you know what I mean? I was just, it's not that he wasn't there. I was just like ignorant to it. I was just like, I don't want you to do this for me because I don't, I don't agree with you kind of thing, you know? When I say the words, embrace your destiny, what does that mean to you in light of your curious experience? I think it, the embrace your destiny for me really means first to know it, you know? You can't embrace what you don't know. And so I would say through Karis, I really have kind of like seen a destiny 
through the kingdom of God, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, this is who I really, this is always who I've wanted to be. I've always wanted to be holy. I've always wanted to be happy with myself. I've always wanted to look at myself in the mirror and say, oh, wow, somebody loves you so much, and I believe it. So just kind of knowing, knowing that, and then God showing you your destiny through that, not just that, so many times I think we get focused on like, what, God, what do you want me to do? Like, we still want to like, whatever it is, get a job, do work this, be a minister, be a pastor, be a worship leader, whatever it is, we get focused on kind of the end result. But God's so focused on the, the getting there, you know, that every step of, of doing it hand in hand, but em embracing your destiny, I think knowing it, knowing that God's called you to something and I, and I think I've seen it now. It's like, okay, God, I see that you've called me to people. Like, I don't know why that was like such a big realization. I was like, oh, I'm called to people. No matter where, what I do, no matter what outlet that's through, through a job or through a ministry, I'm called to people. And I know embracing that and just saying, yeah, God, I agree with you. And you know what I mean? That's what it, that's what it means to me. It's just agreeing with, with what God's called you to do. Every time I knew I was supposed to be out here, I was like, but God, that doesn't work. I would just explain it to God. God, this is how you're wrong. Like, this is how it's not gonna work. And then I came up for a family Bible conference and that's when I was like, me and my, uh, most of my family, a lot of my family came out and even my dad who, who hadn't always been sensitive to God, to hearing God's voice at that time, he was like, Ethan, I really feel like God's just really calling you out here. And he had, like, he knew that I was kind of thinking about it, but he didn't know that it was troubling me the way it, that it was. He's like, I think God's really calling you to do this. And I was like, oh, I don't want to hear that, Dad. <laughs> and, and he was so right in, in that. And then I asked my sister, because I was like, oh, I'll just like, because at that point I was living with my sister and my brother in, in Orlando. And I was like, hey, Brooke, you want to you wanna go to Karis with me? She was like, yeah. And I was like, you don't even know like what you just said yes to. And then afterwards, she was like, we've talked about this. And she was like, I don't even know why I said yeah. She's like, I just felt like I was supposed to say yes. And so, yeah, we came out here. And it was a leap of faith because I was like, okay, God, I've got, I've got money stored up, but not enough to really like to push me through two years. And, and I knew, I was like, okay, two years is is the long run. At first I was like, maybe I'll just stay for six months. Dip out at Christmas, uh, that'd be okay, right? I was like, I was so uncommitted to the whole thought of finishing out school and I was like, maybe I won't have any friends, maybe there won't be any young people there. I was like, maybe I won't connect with anyone. I was like, uh, that would be the worst. I was like, then I would have to go back and I was like giving God all like, all the scenarios to where I would go back to Orlando and he just provided every single time, whether it was like a relationship or finances, miraculously, and those are wild testimonies mm -hmm. too, but yeah, every time. Uh, what would you tell somebody that stumbled onto your Karis talk today and they're hearing your story mm -hmm. and you know they feel like they're probably arguing with God too yeah. about why should they come to Karis and, and why should they apply to Karis Bible College today? Mm -hmm. I would say maybe more than anything just get quiet and, and go to your room or wherever that is and just be real with God and say, God, maybe these are your feelings and give me your feelings and say, this is the truth, this is how I'm feeling, what are you saying about this? And if you're really willing, if you really think that there's a God up there and that he's talking to you and he's telling you to do something, I'd say take it seriously, you know, don't, don't blow it off and, and come up with all the excuses, all the frivolous like, oh, Oh, God, but my dogs or, or my house or whatever it is, God's so much bigger than that. And if you're really believing that he's going to save you for eternity in heaven, I think you can trust him for, for your dogs or for your house. So just, you know, just be real with him and, and, you know, give him, just explain to God. I would, just like a friend, I would say, God, I don't understand this. Help me understand this. You know, it's not questioning God as much as it is just getting, understanding the way that he's thinking and just say, God, maybe I don't want to go to Karis Bible College, but why do you want me to go there? Mm -hmm. Like, explain it to me, and I really think he'll speak to you. Thanks for watching this episode of Karis Talks. To learn more about Karis Bible College, visit our website today. Hey friends, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of today's Karis Talks. Is God speaking to you? Are you wanting more information about Karis Bible College? 
Click this link below, get a little more information. Also, if you've enjoyed this testimony, like, share, and subscribe to this channel to hear more awesome stories of what God's doing here in Karis Bible College.